I've got a lot of strategy games. I'm not even sure why, I'm pretty bad at all of them. As you can see, most are in the fantasy genre. I want to cover a few of my favorites, and the first one is from SSI. SSI was known for their deep turn-based strategy games, mostly the Panzer series set in World War II. They did, however, make this little gem. Possibly the most generic name they could come up with. The story, too, is pretty generic, but the narration really sells it. I love these old-school opening cutscenes. You take on the role of the last general capable of rallying a defense in a world completely ravaged by the Shadow Lord, who was of course holed up in his generically named Shadow Dark Castle. This is your standard turn-based hexagonal strategy game with lots and lots of clicking on units. You've got four characters to choose from, this guy with the awesome Magnum P.I. mustache, this chick, Big Cat Wizard, and Shirtless Sword Guy. They've each got their own advantages, but I'm going with Shirtless Guy. His troops start with a boost to experience, and we have similar tastes in fashion. In between each continent, the narrator updates you on the situation and your next opponent. Sure, it's a little hammy, but it really sets the mood, and it makes up the bulk of the story. The continent of Keldonia, devastated by the Shadow Lord's wrath, is now little more than a barren wasteland. The graphics are what they are. They may not be amazing, but they are still effective, and the music more than makes up for it. Most of these tracks are beautiful, but you're really going to want to turn them off if you intend to pour over this game long enough to finish it, because this game is brutal. I've never beaten it, not even close. The farthest I've gotten is about halfway through the fourth continent. I just sort of run out of steam, the maps get bigger, the allotted turns get lower, and of course the enemies get tougher. It's a problem of attrition. If you get too far without making enough money, investing wisely, or you lose too many valuable units, you will find yourself in an unwinnable situation. It's tough, but you have to prepare for the long haul, and frankly, decide how much patience you're going to have for saving and reloading. I am determined now to finally beat this. Unfortunately, there is very little info on this game floating around, and much of what you do find is conflicting. There's a vast array of unit types to choose from, and they all interact in interesting ways. No naval combat, sadly, but there's more than enough going on here. Cavalry dominate open fields, but suck at attacking fortresses. Skirmishers excel at hit and run. Archers and bombardiers can attack from safety, but fall quickly if cornered. Siege units can gang up on settlements, but are slow and weak. Sky hunters are used for scouting and picking off nearly dead ground units, and for fending off bombardiers and other sky hunters. I can't even begin to cover the unit variety. You've got the lion dragons? Kinda remind me of Voltron. Charlie's Angels here. And another epic mustache. General Mustache is gonna win this war. I managed to dominate most of this playthrough by ignoring diversity and focusing heavily on a few powerful units. It wasn't quite as fun and the game discourages it, but I really wanted to win. My army was almost entirely heavy infantry and heavy cavalry, with a slowly building armada of Sky Hunters. The Sky Hunters died constantly, but I needed them for air superiority. The biggest drawback of some of the more fun units, like archers and siege weapons, is that they simply cannot keep up with the rest of your army, nor can they defend themselves in the slightest. It's just way more efficient to march a blob of quick, powerful units across the map, and the closest thing to a phalanx you can manage. By the time I got to the last continent, I was feeling pretty invincible, but the Shadow Lord himself would not go down easy. The last battle too was suitably epic. You can see the progression here. I had to split my force up early on. The bulk went after the Shadow Lord, and I had to keep a few at the start to defend this castle here, and the rest I had to send to take this keep up in the west. I ended up having little trouble with Shadow Dark, but the western front turned into a suicide march. General Mustache managed to pull through and end the war, as I always knew he would. <laughs> So if you're in the mood for some turn-based strategy, I highly recommend picking this up on GOG. It'll keep you busy for a very long time. 